Good evening, brethren. This is Big Judah coming to you guys from California. Before I begin, I want to give all praises to the Most High, Yahweh. I also want to acknowledge my earthly mother, who is wisdom, who is the Holy Spirit. I also want to acknowledge Yahweh Shai. I pray that the Most High blesses this lesson and gives us some more understanding of the times that we pass through and the uh, times that is to come. You know, I've been kind of a uh, spirit's been on me pretty heavy to make uh, videos, and as I've been kind of taking a chance to kind of look at some of the um, comments, most I kind of led me to a, another topic I think I was supposed to touch on. And uh, it's kind of discussing how um, today, tonight we're going to be discussing a little bit about how, how Gentiles can gain favor. Now, you know, as the chosen people, we are to be a light to the world. And we are like kind of the most far, pretty much the most highest representatives here on this planet. And the Gentiles are going to be judged on how they treat us. And it's really a blessing for the Gentiles at this stage of the game to know who they should be blessing. Because most, the vast majority of the world has no idea who the true sons and daughters of the Most High are. And as some of these um, people from the other nations are coming to the realization that they've been lied to, now they're kind of at a, a fork in the road. Do you continue, you know, a status quo? You continue in the lie? Or do you face the truth? And... Um, and try to follow the Most High at this point, and by blessing His people, by blessing His representatives that He has here on this planet. I'm going to get into some scriptures that kind of discusses that. I mean, I, I'm not here to tell people how, you know, what they should and shouldn't do. The Most High has already predetermined which Hebrews He was going to awaken. He's already predetermined which Gentiles He's going to awaken. He's already predetermined what level of information and knowledge and understanding the Hebrews get, the ones that are awakened. And the same thing goes, he's already determined uh, which Gentiles are going to uh, be awakened and what uh, positions and service they will be uh, providing in the kingdom as well. You know, many people seem to think that uh, we have free will and that's just not the case. The Most High has already predetermined and predictated pretty much everything that is gonna happen. But um, let's kind of take a real quick look here on uh, how the Gentiles, you know, are going to be have the opportunity to gain favor. Um, the Most High uses Gentiles a lot of times to bless the, his people. You know, we have, uh, of course, we have the uh, example of Rahab helping the spies. Um, we have uh, Achiar in the book of uh, Judith, who actually tries to help the um, the Gentiles and let them know, hey, you know, don't go messing with those people. Because, uh, and I'm going to read that really quick here out of the book of Judith. You know, because if the Most High's people are following the the laws of the, and statutes of the, of the uh, Most High, of their, of their power, you know, no one can touch them. And uh, he was already trying to warn the king about attacking us in the first place. And let's see here, That's, this is from the book of Judith, chapter 5, verse 20. Now, therefore, my Lord and governor, if there be any error in this people, and they sin against their God, let us consider that this shall be their ruin, and let us go up, and we shall overcome them. But if there be no iniquity in their nation, let my Lord now pass, by, lest their Lord defend them, and their God before them, and we become a reproach before all the world. This is why it's so important for you other nations to realize who God's chosen people are, because when he had that time where he turned his face away from us, and he, you know, blessed the Gentiles for their time, they were able to do whatever it is that they wanted to do to us. But now the Most High is redeeming his people, redeeming the, his namesakes, his firstborn, 
the ones that he loves and the ones that he's chosen. As he starts to turn his face back to us, the whole game is going to change now. And that's what, um, you know, in the last video, when you saw some of the Gentiles get all upset, it just all kind of depends on how it is you're going to accept the truth, how it is the Most High is going to, uh, you know, harden your heart, or he's going to give you a heart that's able to um, accept the truth. I'm going to read actually now, now that was actually from the book of Judith. You guys are familiar with uh, Rahab, but here is one, uh, another example that you might not have ever heard of that actually comes from the, um, the Acts of Peter. Because uh, even, you know, people who we are probably even considered to be, you know, um, sinners, the Most High uses them as well to bless his people. And this is actually an example of that right here from the Acts of Peter. Let's see here. I'm not sure I want to start here. All right. This is actually from the Lost Scriptures book, chapter 30. I'm going to read a short little story to you guys. Um, there was also present a very rich woman named Chrissy because all her vessels were of gold since her birth. She had never used a vessel of silver or of glass, but only of gold. She said to Peter, Peter, servant of the most high in a dream, the one whom you call God came and said to me, Chrissy, bring 10,000 pieces of gold to my servant, Peter. You owe them to him. So I have brought them, fearing that some evil may come from him whom I saw and who has gone to heaven. And having said this, she laid down the money and went away. And Peter, seeing this, praised the Most High, that the poor could now be provided for. Some of those present said to him, Peter, is it not wrong to have accepted this money from her? All Rome knows of her fornication, and it is reported that she is not satisfied with one husband. She uses her own slaves, therefore have nothing to do with the, with the Chrissy's table, but let everything be sent back to her that came from her. When Peter heard this, he laughed and said to the brethren, As to her conduct, I know nothing of it. Since I have received this money, I received it not without reason. She brought it to me as a debtor to Christ and gives it to the servants of Christ for he himself has provided for them. So as you can see, you know, the most high has used, you know, as an example of him using the other um, <clears throat> Gentiles to serve his purpose by providing uh, means for the Israelites to, you know, go ahead and uh, take care of the word of the work of the most high. So, now, as you come into this truth, you know, it's, it's, and you start getting exposed to the rest of the story. Now the Gentiles have a choice to make. Are they going to continue with the lies? Or are they going to bless the children of the Most High in whatever way the Most High, you know, deems it? If he sends them dreams and tells them what to do, are they going to do it? Or are they going to buck up? That's ultimately up to them. You know, they, you know, the uh, Christian, the Constantine Christians love to use Genesis chapter 12. Let me get that real quick. Genesis chapter 12, verse 3. And I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that curseth thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. And that's very true because the way for uh, many of you other nations, you know, the Gentiles to be blessed is to bless his people. I'm going to get into that shortly in a little bit. But that's how you can receive your blessing. And that's how all the other nations of the world can be blessed, or all the families of the earth can be blessed. So now you have to make that decision. Okay, now I got this couple of comments I wanted to look at. First one right here. This is how the vast majority of the Gentiles are going to um, respond to the truth. And, you know, I, I'm reading what the scriptures say. I'm not making up my own um, ideas, I'm not making up my own interpretation. I'm reading verbatim what the scriptures say. 
Now, if people want to fight that, like I said, that's their, that's between them and the Most High. The Most High doesn't give it to you to see it, and there's nothing I can do as far as that's concerned. Okay? But take a look here real fast. The Israelites are the sons of Jacob and Abraham, who were enslaved in Egypt until Moses freed them from slavery. The ones who gave, or, oh, sorry, who have been persecuted throughout history. Okay, persecuted and executed for being white Jews. <laughs> wow. The ones that were executed by the millions by demon-possessed Hitler in Germany and are still being persecuted and the devil-worshipping Muslims want to exterminate completely the white Jews. Black people are the sons of Ham, son of Noah, who sinned against Noah and Ham's son, Canaan and his black descendants would be cursed. Israelites are the 12 tribes of Israel. No such thing as blacks being the only chosen people and being the Israelites. I'm sick and tired of all that crap. Well, you know what? We're kind of sick and tired of all that crap too. We're kind of sick and tired of you people seeming to think they can just say things that have no basis you know, um, biblically, and then I just assume everyone's going to uh, agree. That's how it's been for the last few hundred years because the Most High allowed that to happen. So as you're sick of hearing about this, we're sick of hearing all the lies as well. I think the whole world is sick of a whole lot of the lies that they've been told. You know, I guess, you know, uh, you're trying to say that Noah had one black son I guess then he had one white son who would be Shem, and I guess one in the middle. How often do you see that? You know, I mean, it just doesn't even make any sense. They were all people of color. Okay, they weren't two, you know, this is just it's a scientific fact. Two white people cannot make a black person. So therefore, that would then mean that Noah must have been black or a person of color as well. Because if one of the kids was so, supposedly so-called black, then all the kids were, would have been. So, I mean, it just doesn't even make any sense. The, the fact that you would make it seem like you have one black kid and you have one white kid and you have one in the middle. How often do you see families like that? Yeah, this is my black son. Um, this is my white son. And this is my son that's in the middle. He's kind of brownish. I mean, come on, man. This is, it's just getting to be really, really ridiculous. But that's okay. You know, I, I you're gonna a lot of these people from the other nations are going to grasp on and hold on to these lies. They're gonna ride it till the wheels fall off, all the way till the end. But really, they don't have a choice because if the Most High doesn't open up their their minds to it, that's what they're gonna go with. But I'm gonna stick with the scripture, the scriptures, real quick. So let's check this out. I'll give you your six million. I'm asking, you know, I'll give you your six million that died in World War II. Okay, six million people, right? Let's check out what the scriptures say really quick on this. Daniel chapter 9, verse 11. Let's check out if uh, who suffered more and what does that mean biblically, okay? Daniel chapter 9, verse 11. Yea, all Israel have transgressed thy law, even by departing, that they might not obey thy voice. Therefore, the curse is poured upon us and the oath that is written in the law of Moses, the servant of the Most High, because we have sinned against him. So the curses, okay, have fallen on the true Hebrews, okay? So we're going to know who the true Hebrews are because no one has suffered any more than them, okay? Okay. Let's see here. Let me get, make sure I got this. And let's go ahead and read 12. I'm going to show you where it says that. Let's read Daniel 9, and now we're going to read 12. So 11 lets you know that the uh, curses were poured out on the Hebrews, okay? 12 lets you know some more here. And he hath confirmed his words, which he spake against us and against our judges that judged us by bringing upon us a great evil. For under the whole heaven, hath not been done as hath been done upon Jerusalem. So 
Jerusalem, the Hebrews, his chosen seed, would have suffered the worst, the absolute worst amount of deaths, <laughs> destruction, and punishment. So let's take a look at this picture here real quick. The genocide in human history didn't occur in Nazi Germany, but on American soil. 100 million Native Americans were slaughtered and lost their homeland. Historical fact, most of the people doing the slaughtering were Christians. Sorry if you can't handle the truth. So those were our brothers, even though many of these other Israelite groups want to say that they're not. These people suffered through curses just like we did. Okay? And many of you guys who are saying those aren't our people, I really don't care. You're welcome to have your own opinion. You can go on your page. You can teach that all you want. Okay? Then you're welcome to have your own opinion. We don't have to agree. And on this point, we're not going to agree. All right? So 100 million natives died. Hundred, another 100 million died in the slave trade. You know, being brought over here in ships. That doesn't even count that. How many, countless, you know, millions that were killed while they were here. Worked to death. Killed, raped, used as an example for Willie Lynch in order to keep the rest of the, um, the brethren in line. You know, all the, um, the hangings, the torture, the rapes, all that stuff. You know, now we're up to about a couple hundred million. So I'll give you your six. But it says in the scriptures that, as, that let's see where it is. For under the whole heaven hath not been done as hath been done upon Jerusalem. So as you can tell, you're 6 million compared to 200 million. Um, that was, should there, there kind of let you know who the real true Hebrews are and the ones who have been um, persecuted the most. All right. Now, there was a great comment that was left. And this is now what many of the uh, Gentiles need to decide. You know, this is a really good comment. The brother that I think on the last video. A note to the Gentile, before I was awakened and came into knowledge, I accepted what I was taught in the Baptist church and later the church of Christ. I also accepted who the UN placed in all and so-called Israel of today and called them God's chosen people. Like many others, I was baptized and began my walk as a Christian. I made an attempt to do the things I needed to do to stay in favor with the Most High. Through ups and downs, thinking I am a Gentile and wanted to make it to heaven. I share all of this, uh, uh, all of this as advice to the true Gentiles. Okay, now I did the same thing. I accepted those were the people. I accepted white Jesus. I accepted Sunday worship. I accepted Christmas. I accepted um, Easter. You know, I did all the pagan holidays because that's what I thought I needed to do in order to make it to heaven. And I didn't have a problem if, he, if Jesus was white. You know, I didn't have a problem with them teaching me that, you know, God's chosen people were white. I had no problem with them teaching me all the, you know, that we needed to support them no matter what. I had no problem with any of that because I wanted, in my heart, I wanted to do what was right in the eyes of the Most High. And it didn't matter about the color or anything else. So, you know, most of us, accepted that truth or that lie at that we thought it was truth at the time but it was a lie now you're going to get your opportunity to accept the truth the gentiles now it's going to be switched and to see if your heart can handle accepting a christ that doesn't look like you if you can accept a people that doesn't look like you as being god's chosen people let's see if you can accept um doing what the most high wants in order for you to be accepted. Now the Most High has switched everything because like it says, everything is going to be backwards. The last will be first, the first will be last. So you had your time to set up everything in your favor. Now the Most High is switching everything up. And now we're going to see where your heart is. We're going to see if you don't care. You, you're there, a lot of Constantine Christians always say, I don't care what color Christ is. You know, okay, well, here you go.
Now you realize the most high sent his son here and he looks more like us. Now what? All right, let me continue. Now I share all of this as advice to the true Gentiles, accept who you are, do what the most high has asked you to do to win favor, acknowledge who his chosen people are, help them. And the most high says, he will remember that. I know if I was in the shoes of a Gentile, I would do all I could for favor that only God can give at the end of the story. Servitude is much better than eternal torment. You Gentiles do have a place either to the left or to the right. I believe it's already predetermined and you will know your faith by your heart and fruits towards his chosen. Fear the Most High, obey his commandments, acknowledge the people who he has chosen, assist his people for who they truly are, and with faith in him, maybe the Most High will show favor at the end for your deeds. I feel like if your heart is genuine with your actions, divinely you will just know the Most High has not appointed you to wrath, but to a role in the next life. That is better than an eternal torment. Mercy and grace are huge words. Stop fighting the end story and figure out how to be in the first chapter of the new story. This was an awesome comment. And it, it is so true. You have to decide what it is. You want eternal damnation? Or do you want to be part of the first chapter of the new story? And that's ultimately up to the Most High if he gives you that heart to do that. And what side do you get to go on? And that goes even for our people. Okay. Now, many people, you know, want, especially the Gentiles, they want to uh, come to the Father on their own terms. And let me show you really quick, two quick scriptures on how that, how that is. Okay. How they want to come to this most high on their own terms. And that's just not going to happen. Matthew chapter seven, verse, uh, Verse 21, you know, when you make up your own religion and then you think that you can just do it, whatever, however you want, you follow the ways of your religion and that's going to be your way into heaven, you know, and, and, this, was, and this is what happens when people do that. Matthew 7, 21, not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my father, which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name and in thy name have cast out devils and in thy name done many wonderful works. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Okay, so you're not coming to the Most High doing Sunday worship, doing Christmas, doing Easter, eating abominable foods. You're not, you're not coming to him, stepping to him like that. He's telling you right now, how you treat his people is a reflection of how you treat him. If you love the most high, then love his people. Last one, I'm going to show you that in the scriptures, how, how, that's, it, how that's the way the most high wants you. He's going to evaluate you. You're, you're being evaluated for a job right now. Matthew chapter 25, verse 40. And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, that's us, his people, ye have done it unto me. So how you treated his brethren is a reflection on how you have treated the Most High. So let that sink in. Because, like I said, it's a huge blessing to know the truth at this point. Because the vast majority of this world is walking around in blindness. And they're going to all the way to the end because it's just like the days of Noah. So if the Most High has chosen you to know the truth, apply it. And that goes for the Gentiles. That goes for our own people as well. All praises to the Most High, Yahweh. Again, acknowledgement to the earthly mother who was wisdom who is the Holy Spirit, 
also acknowledgement to Yahweh Shai. Have a great evening. Shalom.